See that little moving dot up there on the rocks? That's me, Doc McKenzie. Now I admit, I'm used to getting into trouble, but this particular trouble is pretty outrageous, even for me. Especially when you consider that all I'm trying to do with my brother Eli is track down our mother. I know it looks pretty scary, but I live for danger. In fact, this is nothing compared to my last mission. <laughs> slightly overactive imagination, but this is for real, and I swear, this is exactly how I got here. So the doctors say it's his heart? Now explain that to me. Here's a guy, Saul Rubens. He doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, always keeps his cholesterol down. How could his heart be so bad? Isn't Saul in his 90s? The man hasn't had an egg in 46 years. <laughs> It happens all the time. So, Matt, I guess I can assume then that Camp Sedona is off. Yeah, I'm sorry, Cliff. I know the kids are looking forward to it. Well, kids don't have a clue, actually. And my job, rule number one, is you never promise three dozen kids anything in advance. Anyway, listen, uh, give Saul our best, will you? Tell him I hope he's feeling better. Yeah, I'll do that. Hey, Mackenzie. You know, we're all tired of you flying that stupid plane around and not letting anybody else have a turn. It's special. I don't have to. It's special. I don't have to. Yeah, you do. Right now. In fact, right now it's my turn. Now, where's that stupid remote for your stupid plane? My pocket. I'll get it. I'll get it. <laughs> I said, where's the remote? Oh, I'm thinking, so where's the car? it was supposed to be a secret. What's all this stuff, Mr. Haber? <laughs> that, my dear, is what you and your friends are going to need for your week at Camp Sedona. We're going to camp? Camp Sedona! That's odd. I thought Cliff wanted the camp to be a secret. <laughs> Now, Dad, what am I going to do? No 
question about it, son. You've got a problem here. From what I understand, the kids all think they're going to summer camp. Well, because you told them. I told you not to tell them. Why did you tell them? Well, if it makes you feel any better to blame me, son, then that's fine. But think of all of the kids you've disappointed. Now, somehow, we've got to get Saul Rubens to open up Camp Sedona. Oh, sure. And how are we supposed to do that? I'll go see him, explain the situation. What? You can't go see him, Dad. You've never even met the man. Son, I've got misgivings, too. I mean, after all, I've never even met the man. Look, um, Dad, please. I appreciate you trying to help. I really do. I really, really, really do. But we can't go see Saul at a time like this. Matt said the man is barely clinging to life. Is it that bad? I'd better hurry. Yes. Uh, yes, hello? Your name, please. Uh, say again? What is your... What is what? What is your name? What is what? 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 Who are you? What? Do you have an appointment? Do I what? Do you have an appointment? Uh, yes, the, uh, the point is... That I would like to see Saul Rubin. About what? What? About what? What? About what? 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 Hello? You know what, honey? Uh, look, it... It's yeah, just so rental yeah, time. you take it. Okay. okay. Hello? Service entrance straight ahead. Thank you. You will have to excuse me. There's many Saul's friends I don't know. I'm Anne, his wife. No need to apologize, Anne. I'm Harry Habers. Tell me, how is Saul? Oh, he doesn't have much longer. But you know Saul. He's not going to go without a fight. Not a chance. Certainly not without a fight. Uh, would it be possible to have a few words with him, do you think? Oh, of course. He should see all his old friends. Come this way. I come in? Do I know you? Not in the traditional sense, no, Saul. But I would like to tell you why I'm here. But is another word for Heine. Indeed it is. Well, what a lovely girl. It's my niece, Julie. She's going to marry a putz, but she does love that camp. Actually, Saul, the camp was what I'd like to talk to you about. My son, Cliff, runs the Mid Valley Children's Home, not too far from here. Never heard of it. Heard of what? The Mid Valley Children's Home. No. It's a home for children in Mid Valley, not too far from here. You just said that. <coughs> you know what I could go for? An egg. The thing is, Saul, these kids were all set to have a whale of a time in Camp Sedona. Someday, when the time comes, I'm going to leave the camp to Julie. Actually, Saul, the camp is what I'd like to talk to you about. You've been talking about it. <coughs> now, I realize that you're not up to doing things the way you would normally do them. But I was hoping that we could put our minds together and come up with something uh, that would put smiles back on their... <coughs> little faces. Saul. Saul. Sorry about Saul. He was uh, quite a character. I'm gonna miss him. It's good to see you tonight. Yeah, it has. Almost two years. Hi. Jeffrey Shays. Hi, Julie's fiance. This is Matt Nolan, an old friend of mine. Oh, the camp counselor. Of course. 
Well, um, hey, congratulations on the uh, fiance ship. That's really, I mean, it's, um, actually, I'm a camp director now. The important thing is you get to wear short pants to work. How many people get to say that, right? Well, that depends, Jeff. You want an exact accounting on that? It's Jeffrey, not Jeff. Let's go, honey. Okay. They're about to begin. No, I'll see you later. Absolutely. Terrific meeting you, man. Bye, Jeff. Marie. Did you have to make fun of him about that short? I'm speaking metaphorically. You said yourself the guy won't grow up. If the size of this congregation is any indication, we honor a much-loved man today. I enjoyed our visit the other evening, Anne, and I want to let all of you know that it's Anne's desire that these prayers Julie, will be a comfort could I to speak each of you. to you after the services? I have something rather important to discuss. By all accounts, Saul Rubens was a self-made man, rising from humble beginnings to a position of great power and wealth. But in doing so, he never turned his back on his roots. Now I would like to call on a dear friend of Saul's, the last friend, in fact, to see him alive. Mr. Harry Haber, would you come up, please, sir? Saul Rubens was a self-made man, rising from humble beginnings to a position of great power and wealth. But in doing so, Saul never turned his back on his roots. I knew Saul Rubens a good many years since we were young children growing up on neighboring porches in the Bronx. I thought Saul grew up in Philadelphia. But our friendship really blossomed that crazy year in Tijuana when we ran guns to the rebels and chased drunken senoritas. I remember the last words that Saul said to me before he passed on. But, he said, is just another word for Heine. Today, hearing those final words, I can't help thinking, isn't that just like our old pal? Indeed, it is, Saul. Indeed, it is. Could I talk with you after the services? I have something rather important to discuss. Yeah. Dad, where have you been? I was worried about you. I thought you said you were going to call me. I'm sorry, son, but things have been a bit hectic with the funeral and all. Funeral? Oh, my God. Oh, no. Saul Rubens died? I would have called, but things have been a bit hectic with the funeral and all. Dad. You didn't actually cause Saul's death in any way. Don't be ridiculous. Would a man's heart stop beating just because I talked to him? No. Anyway, the way things turn out, Saul left Camp Sedona to his niece, Julie. Oh. And incidentally, just between you and me, I was told that her fiancé is a real putz. Yeah. Well, anyway, that's none of our business, Dad. I'm sure she's delirious about him. Did you talk to Julie about the kids? I'm getting to that, but first let me tell you what Julie said about the kids. She would not dream of disappointing them. Fantastic! So we're back on! Mark it on your calendar. We head off to camp July 1st. <laughs> July the 1st. Four weeks from today, 28 days. That's precisely how much time we have to convert Camp Sedona into Shea Sedona, an exciting adult resort. Invitations have already been mailed to 20 hotel resort developers and their spouses. When do we agree to sell a summer camp? Right after my fiancé was left one instead of cash and securities. Any more stupid questions? Yeah, why? Why put all this money into a temporary makeover? Let's just sell the property. The land alone has got to be worth a fortune. Did you hear what I just said? The land's not mine. It's Julie's. Technically, I'm just sprucing up the place. July the 1st, we drive up, 
spend the weekend. And if one of my guests just happens to make a deal out of the blue... I suppose it's more cosmetic than anything. Dry first. It can be done. This is right. She lives in Phoenix, Arizona. It's right. I copied from her file. I know it's hers. Okay. Then look. Here's Phoenix, where Mom is. And here's Camp Sedona in Norristown. Look how close they are. They're only like a couple of inches. Yeah, but an inch? 20 miles. Phoenix is like 40 miles away. It's a lot closer than we are now. And we may never get another chance like this. Hey, Miguel. Take this back. Tell them there's a hair in my cake. Not again. Hello, Harry Haber. No, Jeffrey Shea's here, sorry. <laughs> Hello, Harry Haber. Mr. Haber, don't hang up! Say again. I said, hang up! Uh, ah! <sighs> Hello, Harry Haber. Mr. Haber, don't hang up. It's Jeffrey Shays, Julie Roberts' fiance. Oh, yes. What can I do for you, Jeffrey? Mr. Haber. Yes, we have a scheduling problem regarding your weekend at Camp Sedona. Unfortunately, Julie didn't realize I'd already scheduled the camp for July the 1st. Oh, that is a problem. Well, I was wondering if there was some way you could maybe, uh, uh, change your plans to a different camp. Say again. You could change plans? Well, sure, if you don't mind, that's fine with us. What? Would you turn that damn thing off? You on the phone? Can't you see I'm on the phone? Mr. Hammer, what were you saying? I said that's fine, Jeffrey. And thank you for calling. talking to a babe like that hey she's a girl okay all she wants to hear is how good looking she is watch and learn yeah hi listen i just wanted to tell you i really liked that dress you were wearing the other day it was what are we gonna do with it but classy too you know what i mean and i've got an idea it was clunky and clothes well, kids come here from all kinds of situations. I mean, some are newborns. Others, uh, take Alec and Eli McKenzie, for example. Their birth mother gave up custody to the father. But then the father died in a car accident two years ago. Excuse me just for a second. Yeah, Tracy? Nick Tyler, line two. Oh, <laughs> Nicky's one of our 12-year-olds. I love this kid. He calls you on the phone? Oh, yeah, they all do. I have a very special relationship with the kids, you know. 
Hey, Nikki. What's up, buddy? Getting ready for camp? Listen, I just wanted to tell you I really liked that dress you were wearing the other day. It was sexy. Nick. Nick. This isn't a good time. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. wait. That's not funny, Nick. That's not funny. Well, wait, wait, Mr. and Mrs. Lackman, wait. It's, it's, it's... Let me just say that another stunt, even remotely resembling this one, will cause you both great hardship and when i say great oh i don't just mean great no 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 i mean hardship grotesque in its greatness eli go wait by the camp bus please good luck what am i gonna do with you alec i mean look at this you're out of boxes i'm gonna have to start writing on the wall alec you're grounded you're not going to camp. Oh, come on, Mr. Haber. I swear I won't do it again. Alec, you always say you'll never do it again, and then you know what? You do it again. Well, I won't this time, Mr. Haber. I promise. I need to go to camp. Alec, what you need is to face up to the fact that you have to take responsibilities for your actions. Now, hopefully, you'll learn something from this in the long run, okay? gotta go what about finding mom what am i supposed to do he grounded me i got an idea come on okay kids everybody on the bus one at a time one at a time let's go Melissa took a bath last night and the water overflowed. Well, that's okay. There's no tattling on camp day, okay? Come on, get up. Let's go, kids. One at a time. One at a time. Ready. Get your tickets out as you're going in, please. And oh, oh, uh, that's going to have to ride in the seat up front with you, Eli. Be careful, Mr. Haber. It's a little heavy. Just a minute, Eli. This is a little heavy. This bag must weigh as much as you, Eli. Oh, that's, it. that's it. Okay, Dad, that's it. That's all of them. Now, listen. All I ask is you don't lose anybody. Cliff, relax. These kids are on their way to blue skies, fresh air, and good, clean fun. Are you sure? Yeah. Just remember, honey, I did this all for you. Open them. See what a couple buckets of paint can do? <laughs> oh, my God. Isn't it great? No. It's not great. What? You've ruined it, Jeffrey. What? You've ruined my camp. What are you... Julie! Sandy! Hi. Welcome to Shea Sedona. <laughs> Was I right? Huh? Is this place not gorgeous? Anna, hi. How you doing? I carry a burden. She carries a burden? According to her Schmageggy psychic. Seems in a past life her best childhood friend got trampled to death by a horse. Oof. Tough break. Lance, his name was. He's been trying to contact her ever since. They haven't hooked up yet. Go figure. So, what's the deal? Is this property on the market or what? Well, officially, no. Uh, it was left to my fiance, but who knows? I doubt if she wants to be in the resort business. Hey! What are you doing here? You know what might be a nice touch? If you filled in the lake and put up a Starbucks. This was Jeffrey's idea. He thought that I'd like it. Oh. He thought you'd like it. Hmm. Well, what were some of his other thoughts? Uh, burying it under a layer of phlegm? Hmm. And Jeffrey was met where? He does business with my father. Great. So, 
He's even got the family seal of approval. That's nice. That's that's real nice. Because I tried for the seal, you know. I wanted the seal, but the rules clearly state that the seal may not be awarded to camp directors, so... You know, my family has nothing to do with this. I happen to love you, him, Jeffrey. I love Jeffrey. It's just, you know, it did not work out with you and me. You know something? You're right. You're right, and it's my fault, because it never occurred to me that you had a thing for guys who'd control your life and destroy your camp. So... For your information, our relationship ended because you refused to wear long pants. And I speak metaphorically. What's that supposed to mean? It means that your entire life is devoted to knock hockey and bullwinkle and Captain Crunch. It means that you would rather act like a child than grow up and have children of your own. Jewel? You do realize the Mid-Valley kids are coming here today, right? No, no. Jeffrey spoke to Harry. He said that you all needed to change plans. Well, there must have been some sort of misunderstanding. Hi. Sounds like kids singing. What is yeah. it? I can't make it out. We welcome you to Camp Sedona. We're mighty glad you're here. We'll send the air with a mighty cheer. We'll you in, we'll you out. We'll stop your <laughs> More guests? Oh, what are you doing? You're not supposed to be here. Jeffrey, calm down. I can see your little neck veins quivering. You do seem a tad out of sorts. A tad? Look, we spoke on the phone. I told you there was a conflict. You agreed to change your plans. No, I don't think so. Oh, yes, you did. You have you absolutely did. That's exactly what you said. Well, since we're both unclear about this point, why don't we try to make the best of it? Oh, honey, I think that's a good idea. I have guests here. You know, there's no room for these children to sleep. Well, it's a camp. I'm sure they brought sleeping bags and tents. Of course they did. Now, where will the children be sleeping? <laughs> what I was hoping for. They're under strict orders to stay completely out of our way. We won't even know they're here. They're always vomiting. Nobody always vomits. I don't want to deal with vomit. Are you too serious? Julie. <laughs> she's got this thing for kids. Otherwise, she's great. Great. Is she just going to be you and all us kids? Are you saying I can't handle it? Yeah. Well, let me tell you something, my dear friend. Not only can I be all places at all times, but if necessary, I can change the course of mighty rivers. Not to mention Ben Steele with his bare hands. Just in case I can hang around there if you want and help. Sure. That would, uh, that would be helpful. Okay, Eli, your thrill-packed weekend is about to begin. Okay, thanks. On the way home, you're in the back. When we find Mom, we'll be home. Remember? That reminds me. We gotta get directions. Really 
loud. Ooh, just testing the system. Uh, what can I help you with? Matt said there were some maps in your office. Right there in the wall. What can I help you with? Can I look at the map? Go right ahead. Looking for anything in particular? Phoenix, Arizona. Ah, Phoenix, Arizona. You know there's a city called Phoenix in Arizona? Have you ever been there? Eli, after 34 years in the rental business, I'm as familiar with these cities as molten steel. So, have you ever been there? Been where? Phoenix. Like, how would you get there if you were leaving from camp, let's say? All right, well, we'll hear guest ranches. You take 70 on up to 88, then 88 down to 60, and then 60 straight on in. That's it. Okay, thanks. Hey, how you doing? I carry a burden. I carry a soda. What you doing there? Oh, Eli. Uh, Eli's not here. You raise a valid point. You two bunking together? Uh huh. All right. Let me just cross you off my list here. Well, what's your name, pal? Um, my name? Yeah. Usually it's what people call you. Hmm. This is sort of weird. I'm right here. Well, we already crossed off Patrick Fullerstein. No, he's not Patrick Fullerstein. He's Pat Stein. Number four. Tracy, she must have combined our names by accident. Rick Fuller. So she did. And for that, she must die. Hey, is that a Fly Rider 2000? Uh huh. Me and my dad built it for my sixth birthday. No kidding. I built one for my 29th. It's in several hundred pieces right now. Dad taught me how to keep the motor greased and how to fix the polish if they break. Sounds like you and your dad are quite a team. We were going to fly it in a contest at Bovo Park August 4th, 1994. That's the day he died. He said it's because he wasn't wearing his seatbelt. Do you wear a seatbelt? Yes, I do. All the time. It's a good thing. I'm going in. Hey. Hello. How about a drink? Oh, you're the little bus boy. How <laughs> adorable. I'd love a club soda, please. Will a kiss be fine? What? Twist the lime in your club soda. Oh, yes. Thank you. Can I see your tushy? What? Um, would you like some sushi? Oh, oh, I, I, I don't eat sushi. You really nailed her, man. <laughs> Can I see your tushy? <laughs> Horseback riding time, guys. Last one to the stables. Oh. Clears the duty. Let me keep him. Oh, I'm sure he will, honey. Yes! Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Bright sunlight, fresh air, smiling children doesn't get better than that, does it? Four words, Harry. Oh. Porsche, women, satellite dish. Matt, as you get older, you're going to be astonished at how little those trinkets mean. Satellite dish aside. Yeah. I thought Julie was going to be working with you today. Yeah, well, I guess Jeffrey told her she wasn't. I swear, I don't get what she sees in that guy. What could he possibly give her that I can't? Oh, I'm afraid there's no answer to that question. Marriage, certainly. Beautiful home. Promise of a secure, bright future. Respectability and 
No, I'm afraid there's no answer to that question. Can I help it if I'm not ready for marriage? I mean, hey, at least I know it. I have a feeling you're more prepared for marriage than you think. All you need is it. Nick! No jousting! A little push. What are you doing, Alec? Why'd you leave the tent? It's okay. Matt already saw me. He saw you? What did you tell him? I told him I was Rick Fuller. Who's Rick Fuller? Well, the point is, he bought it. A free man. No, you're not. Because Mr. Haber's dad still knows you're not supposed to be here. So do all the other kids. Oh, yeah. Do me a favor, Alec. Rick! <sighs> Just let me do the thinking from now on. Now get back to the tent and don't let anybody else see you. Are you sure you can cook in this dump? I mean, do you have enough electricity and everything? Oh, good, good. Everything looks excellent. Oh, I'm only afraid you've ordered too much, Mr. Shays. Perhaps we could serve what's left to the children. Oh. Yes, I, I'd love to. But you feed food to stray animals, they only come back for more. For Lance. Lance, the uh, horse trampled boy? My psychic said that he would be back tonight, hiding in the shadows, frightened, giving me the eye. Right, honey. The psychic hasn't missed yet, right? Well, look at these nitrate sizzle, ladies and gentlemen. Who is up for more? Here, here. I do. All right. One. No, oh, here. You two. Oh, you yeah. There you go. Hey, Eli, maybe you should check on Rick, see what's keeping him. Uh, who's Rick? Rick Fuller. He and Eli are roomies. Oh, who's Rick Fuller? He doesn't actually go by Rick. He has a nickname. Tank. Tank Fuller. I like it. Well, I never heard of any... T hey, watch it! Oh, I'm sorry, Roger. Hey, Nick, what's that, your third hot dog? You going for the record there, Nick? Maybe. What kind of record? In the summer of 1989, 10-year-old Edward Tuminello consumed 46 cheese-filled Oscar Mayer wieners before his stomach sadly exploded. No way. I kid you not. You asked Julie. Two weeks later, she found his small intestine in her canoe. Hey, why would I lie? Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Saving that one for later? Uh, yeah. I sometimes get hungry at night. I was the same way as a boy. How about you, Elon? Do you sometimes get hungry at night? Uh, sometimes. I was the same way as a boy. Now that's disgusting. I'm sure that's not a real eye. It's a marble. No, it's Lance. Hi, Lance. Oh. It's all right. Hate to eat and run, but I gotta get Lana sedated. Anybody know a jack in the box nearby? Oh my God. Oh. Little brats completely destroyed our evening. What are you talking about? We've been here roasting hot dogs all night. I see. So, 
It's just a zany coincidence that explosives turned up in our squad. Jeffrey, if you want my advice, you'll chalk this up to a full moon and let it go. As a matter of fact, if you want my advice, you'll chalk this up to a full moon and let it go. Does anyone beside me realize that he constantly repeats himself? Look, Hot Pants, you keep these kids in line, or else they'll be back on that bus tonight. Get out of my car! I am sorry, everybody. <laughs> Jeffrey's... A dick? Nick used a D word. Well, it's just that he's under a lot of stress. He's not normally like this. It's funny, isn't it? You must know Jeffrey from an entirely different side. Otherwise, why in the world would you marry him? It was a dumb move, Alec. What if you got caught stuffing their food with all that junk? It still would have been worth it. So listen, I asked the caterers. Their office is right outside Phoenix. Cool. So we can hit your ride? Mm-hmm. Eli. Eli, you still awake? Tank. You missed the cookout, buddy. Tank? Uh, I told him your nickname. Huh. Eli, got a little mission for you if you're up for it. A mission? Mm-hmm. Top secret, virtually foolproof. Now, I know this is usually Alex's territory, but... Matt, with all due respect to Eli, I am your man. All right. Let's do it. Trust me, it never fails. Just dip Jeffrey's hand in there, and a few seconds later, he'll be wee-weeing like a newborn babe. What happens if you get caught? Act alone. You had nothing to do with it. Go get him, Tank.
Six o'clock. Mm -hmm. It's six o'clock. Was he out of his mind? Where are you going? I gotta kill somebody. morning. I acted alone. Matt had nothing to do with it. It's six o'clock in the morning. Say again. It's six o'clock. What? It's six o'clock in the morning! No need for a watch tip. You'll know it's six when Reveille plays. Apple? Why, yes. Thank you. You're welcome. A little fishing this morning, fellas? You might say that. Mm. Those three kids? Mm hmm. Very scary. Yeah. We were pretty scary, too, though. Do you remember that night that we took the rowboat out and we didn't come <laughs> back until the next morning? You remember the cops who were dragging the lake for our bodies? Yeah. Shouldn't they have been glad to see us? Do you remember that night? that Lisa Nash snuck into your bunk and mm -hmm. she dipped her hand in the warm water and you wet the bed? Mm -hmm. Yep, but I got her back, you remember? Because the next morning I wrung out my sheets in her glass and told her it was apple juice. Mm -hmm. Remember? <laughs> oh, Julie. <laughs> it was apple juice. But it didn't have to be. I don't believe it. She's going to be totally, completely bare. What's on your mind, Paris? Well, last night I spoke with a small but very wealthy consortium that I do business with from time to time. They want to buy the camp, Jeffrey. Really? Now, the most important rule to remember when firing a bow and arrow is never fire at anything except a regulation target under adult supervision. Why? That's why. Now, who's first? Hello? 
Hello, Harry Haber. Yeah, Dad, listen to me. Alec McKenzie is in here. He's run away. Is it possible he's up there with you at the camp? Here at camp? I haven't seen him. Well, do me a favor and check, will you? Maybe he's somehow snuck onto the bus. All right, I don't see how he could be here, though, unless, of course, he somehow snuck onto the bus. Hello? Technology. We should leave them in the catering truck after breakfast tomorrow. That'll give us plenty of time before they figure out we're gone. Are you I? Eli, I have a very important question to ask you. And I don't want you to lie to me. What is it? What is what? You said you had a question to ask me? I have a very important question to ask you. And I don't want you to lie to me. Is your brother Alec here in the camp? No. I haven't seen Alec since we left Mid Valley. That's what I thought. All right, you have a good day, son. Great. One more thing, Eli. We didn't want to worry you about Alec being missing. We just wanted to make sure that he wasn't here. I understand. You have a good day, son. What are we gonna do? Oh, uh, one more thing, Eli. If Alec should turn up, let me know, would you, son? Even though we know where he is, we'd like to know when he is there. No problem. Oh, you have a good day. Whatever you do, Alec, don't move. Here it comes, you guys. Right about now. Hey, oh, Jesus! It's stuck. Just leave it. Come on. <laughs> Look who's here. How'd you get to Camp McKenzie? Maybe he was planning. Mr. Haber drove me up this morning. A bull he did. Now give me that remote, maybe I won't tell him. Go away, Nick. Go away, Nick. Hey, Alec. I wasn't asking for a turn. toy. So you kissed me. You went a little crazy. It's okay. I'm fine now, you know? No need to apologize. You know what Eli just told me? He said that he and his brother are going to be back in a family again really soon. Maybe they will. At his age, forget about it. Matt, you were an orphan. You know how hard it is. And he's got a brother. A real hellraiser, like you. Hell-raising does not necessarily make a bad kid. Matt, Julie. 
Hey, Harry, any word from Alec yet? Not recently, no. We were actually just talking about Alec and Eli and who might want to adopt them. How about you and Jeffrey? Oh. I don't really think that, uh, Jeffrey is the adopting kind of guy. Well, gee, there's a shocker. Well, I don't see you taking on that kind of commitment, or any kind of commitment for that matter. Let me tell you something. If I was gonna commit, I'd commit to somebody who kept his hands off of my summer camp. Go away! Joy! Hi. Hi. Give us a minute. Take two, Jeff. Jeffrey. Can you believe how defensive she got? Calling me uncommitted? I am not uncommitted. Not only am I not uncommitted, I am committed to not being uncommitted. Well said. Pierce Hamill has made an offer to buy the camp. <laughs> but I'm not selling the camp. <laughs> I understand that. But apparently, this land is worth a lot of money to a group of developers. Did you tell Pierce that my camp was for sale? Is that why all these people are here? Is that what they think? Oh, of course not. Honey, you know real estate people, they, they think everything's up for grabs. Matter. Alex in trouble. Where is he? You know where Alec is? Yeah, he's climbing the rocks. Come on. Well, let's go. Hey, you two stay here, all right? Julie, they've got it covered. Let's talk to Pierce. Let go of me, Jeffrey. I'll tell him you're open to it. That's not Alec, that's Tank. I have a feeling that Tank is Alec. Well, he's not supposed to be here. He's grounded. Shut up, Nick. How come I'm so sure this is all your fault? Now, now, this is no time to worry about whose fault it is. The important thing is to get Alec down from here. The boy looks guilty of sin to me. Alec! Listen, buddy, I want you to come down now, okay? Very carefully and very slowly. After I get my plane. Alec! Forget about the plane, son. Just come down. You won't do it. You won't leave the plane up there. Why? It's just a stupid plane. No, it's not. It's not just a plane. Matt, be careful. Did we do any climbing before? No. Never too late to learn a skill. Thank you. That goes for me, too. Me, too. Me, too. Me, too. Uh, all right, I got you. I got you, okay? Yeah. Listen, before I forget, very professional job on that wee wee gag. Thanks. I also sabotaged the dinner party. I was afraid of that. All right, grab on. There you go. You okay? I got you. Mm -hmm. Just lie down. You okay? Can't leave my plane up there, Matt. Tells me I remember my dad. Okay. Okay. What are they doing? Why aren't they coming down? He's going back for the plane. Be careful. I'm okay. I mean with the plane. Uh. 
I got it. He's there, Dad, right now in front of you. And it's not some cleverly designed robotic creature. Uh, yes, he's here and he's in fine shape, but hold on for a second, son. Alec is wondering how many demerits this is going to cost him. Alec would like to know how many demerits this is going to cost him. <laughs> All right, son. I'll tell him. The bad news is Mr. Haber's coming to take you back home. The good news is that I think I can get him to cut your gazillion demerits in half. A gazillion? Mr. Haber's coming. You gotta leave tonight. What's the matter? Nothing. I just wish we could stay with Matt and Julie a little longer. I really like them. I think Dad would have. I think Dad would have liked them a lot. Before Saul died, he told me how much you loved this camp. Yeah, it's too bad this place isn't a camp anymore. At least not the camp I remember. Unfortunately, Julie, I think that Jeffrey has plans for the camp. You know what, Harry? I am sick and tired of people knocking Jeffrey, and I'm not saying that he can't be difficult, but his heart is in the right place, and I know that he would never do anything to hurt me, so please, just don't, okay? So how well did you really know my uncle? Not counting the CPR, not more than two or three minutes. You move in mysterious ways, Harry Haber. Sometimes, Julie, that's the only road available. boy he stowed away he wasn't even supposed to be here no nope. and the poor kid is gonna go home and face a gazillion demerits really a gazillion julie pierce wants to discuss buying the camp oh look i really don't know I... Our young friends. follow me if you please that's what i told them honey that we just weren't interested in stuff. And I understand that, believe me, but uh, Julie, unless you plan on giving this camp your full attention, it's going to deteriorate into nothing. At least let me present my offer. Hey, fellas, how you doing? Hey, fellas, yeah, we yeah. got the cheap seats. I can't believe Julie's going to marry that guy. I know. Julie's a big girl, fellas. If she wants to spend the rest of her life with a good-looking rich guy, huh? that's her choice, you know? Well, I guess that's that. Yep. What's the deal with you two? If something's wrong, you fix it. You roll up your sleeves and you work on it. Until you get it right. Yeah. You know something, Alec? You are the man. That is very good advice. I know. My dad told it to me. Where was I? I think you're over at Richard's. Oh. It's a very generous offer, Julie. 
It is. You're right. And I'm not saying that it isn't. Julia. It's just that... <sighs> Honey, this camp represents some great memories of some wonderful summers. But selling it's not going to make those memories disappear. They're all right here. But if selling could enrich our lives, give us a chance at some wonderful memories of our own, don't you think Uncle Saul would have approved? Maybe. Of course he would have. Excuse me a sec. Mr. Haber. Uh, yes, I'm Mr. Haber. Uh, yes, I know you. Friends? I've got a repair to make. Julie, are you happy with Jeffrey? What? Are you sure he's the one you want to marry? Would you take your seat before you cause a national power outage? Well, you know what? To be honest with you, Matt, I wasn't sure until tonight, but earlier, Jeffrey showed me his sensitive side that I had always hoped was there. You know, and plus, he's... He's handsome and successful. He's generous, witty, adventurous. He's a great dancer. So what are you saying? Are you happy or not? Uh, before movie night begins, I'd like to extend a special I love you to my bride-to-be. <laughs> now let's all sit back and relax on this beautiful night watch Independence Day. sensitive side, I have no choice but to question his dancing. This entire weekend has been a complete disaster. The next time you have something to sell, Jeffrey, leave me off the invitation list. What? Nothing, nothing. Come on, the trip's outside. Honey? spoke to a small but very wealthy consortium that I do business with from time to time. Hmm. They want to buy the camp, Jeffrey. Really? Are you sure Julie's willing? You leave Julie to me. One way or another, she's going to sell the stump. Just make the deal. Julie? <laughs> Honey, it, it's not what it looks like. It's just guy talk. <laughs> My camp is not for sale, Pierce, and neither am I. Jeffrey, you were always the lucky one, Honey. not me. You know what? And one more thing. Oh. <laughs> I feel like talking, Matt. Me neither. Only once in a great while do I actually feel like talking. And even then, I don't talk. Fact is, I, uh, 
I love people who feel like talking. <laughs> I'm not crying because I loved him. I'm crying because I knew I didn't. And I was still gonna marry him. And the police searched all over the area with flashlights and bloodhounds for eight days and eight nights. And the children were nowhere to be seen. No one could explain how 16 campers could suddenly disappear. Until they came across a campfire, much like this one. And when they looked into the fire, they saw piles of burnt ash. Sixteen piles of burnt ash. Did, did, did they ever catch the fire ghost? Don't be a doofus, Roger. It's a story. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. The fire ghost. Some say that he still walks in these parts, disguised waiting to burst into fire and to strike again. The fire goes, the fire goes! What happened to the kids? Oh, well, <laughs> uh, I guess that uh, old ghost story, uh, was a little scarier than I remembered. <laughs> well, we better go round them up. You want to put out the fire, Harry? I'll be happy to as soon as I put out the fire. Well, uh, uh, uh well, uh, uh. Where, Jerry? Say again. Where, Jerry? Where, Jody? Yes, I, uh, I've been watching the ring. There. There. Red Jerry! Jeff, if that's the tone of voice you plan on using, then my jewelry is no longer up for discussion. I definitely, definitely! See you in the morning, ladies. Night, night. Night. Rest well, Adam? You too, Matt. Night, Eli. Good night, Tank. Guys? Maybe they're just out walking. Plane's gone. Do any of you have any idea where Alec and Eli are? No. Now, come on, guys. I need you to think real hard on this one. This is very important. Did they mention anything to any of you about leaving? No. no. Tabitha? I'm not a tattletale anymore. Sweetie, helping somebody who may be in trouble is not being a tattletale. It's being a very big girl. For reals? For reals. Yeah, this is Matt Nolan up at Camp Sedona. Listen, uh, one of your catering trucks left here a little while ago, and we're pretty sure two of our boys were hiding out inside. Jury? Hmm. Well, they must have just snuck on board. Could we please talk? Not now, Jeffrey. It, look, doesn't the truck have, like, a radio or a car phone or anything? Matt, ask them if the truck has a radio or a car phone. All right, well, listen, I I'm on my way right now. If the truck beats me there, don't let those boys out of your sight. Uh, Julie, why don't you go with him? The boys have grown quite attached to you. They have? It might make their re-entry into society much easier. We'll call you when we find him. Right. Good. Now, uh, Matt, call me when you find him. Yeah. Jerry! There's something else going on here. Those two are way too smart to just run away. They're running to somewhere. Well, it must be somewhere special to be worth knocking around in the back of a truck, cold and hungry. If I eat this, I'm going to puke. Me too. Hey, Dad! How's Alec and Eli? Couldn't be better. Great. Where are they? In the back of the catering truck. 
What are you talking about? What catering truck? Alec and Eli slipped out. What? Matt and Julie are driving to meet them now. In a catering truck? What catering truck? I don't believe this. What were they thinking? They ran away. You can say that again. after they parked. Come on, they've got little legs. They can't be too far. Five, 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 oh, one, seven, five. Hello? Mom? You've reached five, 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 zero, one, seven, five. I'm sorry I'm not here to take your call right now, so please leave a message at the tone. Bye-bye. Did you hear a voice? Well, she sounded pretty friendly to me, don't you think? Let's go wait in the catering truck and call back later. Okay. Now what? I'm getting cold. Let's hide in there. How do you know nobody's gonna move it? We'll look around. Everything's closed. It's parked for the night. Come on. Hey, look, there's a map. Maybe Mom's close by. We could walk it. This is just a thought, son. Does Phoenix have any special meaning to the boys? Phoenix? It's a city in Arizona. And now that I'm thinking of it, Eli seemed particularly interested in how to get there. Dad, I know where they're going. Here it is. We're inside place. Well, what are we supposed to do? Answer it. Say it's the wrong number. Sorry, wrong number. Still no answer? Not yet, no. Well, that was easy. I just can't stand the thought of those two little boys out Duck! there. Duck! Let's be positive here. These are sharp kids. They plan this whole escape. They're probably in a hotel suite getting massages by now. Harry Haber here? Hey, Harry, it's us. Listen, we're at the caterers, but the kids weren't in the truck. They were, but they left. We've been out looking for them. Now, just a minute. Cliff has an idea of where they might have gone. Uh, uh, you two drive carefully now and don't do anything reckless. Yeah, hello, Matt. Listen, I think they went to look for their birth mother. Yeah, she lives about 20 minutes from where you are now. 22, Burnside Place. Uh, her name is Susan Bridges. Harry Haber here again, folks, now suggesting that you think good, healthy thoughts and uh, don't say anything you wouldn't normally say in the presence of uh, small people. What if I'm wrong, Dad? What if I'm wrong about Phoenix and they're, they're downtown somewhere, wandering around, all by themselves? Have faith, son. I have a feeling that Eli and Alec are in good hands. Come in. That's it. 22 Burnside. I can't wait to see how they got here. Sorry to bother you, ma'am. We're from the Mid Valley Children's Home. Where Alec and Eli live? Mom? Yes, Mom? Alec and Eli. I'm Eli, and I'm Alec. They kind of pulled a prison break to come and see you. Uh, I don't know what to say. I I'm not their mother. You're not Susan Bridges? 
Hello, sweetie. My name's Lauren. Lauren Osborne? But Alec wrote down the address. Who are these people, Mom? Nobody. Or nobody. Come on, Alec. Hey. We just moved here a few months ago. I, we never even met the owners. There's no need to apologize. We're real sorry that would bother you. Good night. Good night. Well, you're running away aside. We're real sorry that this didn't turn out the way you wanted it to. We'll find her. And when she finds out, we've been looking for everything she's gonna be fine except maybe we should call first i'd hate to get there and find out that it wasn't her again <sighs> yeah you waste a lot of gasoline that way that is an excellent point my friend actually i'd like it better if mom came looking for us just so we knew that we were wanted good night guys all right good night matt good night good night matt Good night, my man. We'll see. Night. Peace out. They're something, aren't they? Yeah. They're really something. Actually, Harry Cliff is who I'm here to see. At this hour? What about? I want to adopt Alec and Eli. Well, that's something you should probably talk to Cliff about. I know, Harry. That's why I'm here. I'm... Look, is he sleeping? Can I wake him? Matt, a single father adopting two children. That is quite an undertaking. Now, believe me, I know how easy it is to become attached to these kids. A single father adopting two children. That's quite an undertaking. Uh, Harry... Harry, I've thought about this. I've spun it around, took both sides, and thought about it again. And all I know for sure is, I want to be Alec and Eli's father. I want to take them to baseball games. I want to help them with their homework and tuck them into bed at night. I want to be there for them, Harry. Well, you sound sincere. Although, those kids could use a mother, too. You're right. You're right, and... I'm going to take care of that detail right now. Well, Matt, I sure hope it's Julie you're talking about because she beat you in here by 20 minutes. Um, Julie, will you marry me and let me be the father of Susan Bridges' children? With love, too. Yes. <laughs> Thank you.
Explain to me how you do it. Explain how you take a perfectly ordinary situation, turn it into something cataclysmic, and then have it wind up like a fairy tale. Sam, you might just as well ask me how I take a perfectly ordinary situation, turn it into something cataclysmic, and have it wind up as a fairy tale. The important thing is that two kids now have a home, yep. which is two more than when I arrived. On the drive back, start planning next summer. Next summer? Whoa, 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 what are you talking about? Wait a minute! God. Shut those windows, will you, son? Okay, Mr. Haber. Just as soon as I shut these windows, 